Bugging Out, the survival practice that has captured the minds of preppers all across the world. The fanatical idea of surviving against the elements in pursuit of adventure with only a bag with the things that you can carry inspired stories like Into the Wild, Lewis and Clark, Tom Sawyer, and countless others. Modern day bugging out is looked at with a much different lens. A lens that is based on the collapse of a government and society causing mass panic and desperation. Lawlessness will prevail and danger will be everywhere around you. Bugging out is an attempt to escape away from the immediate dangers to a more secure location. A lot of importance is put on the things that you will bring with you. Is there a perfect bag setup? I don't believe so. Environmental, health, and finances play a big role on what you're capable of bringing and it looks a lot different for everybody. In this video, I'm going to be going over what's inside my bug out bag. Before we get started, I need to say something real quick. Um, if you find anything that you like in this bag, in this video, I'm going to have links to it down in the description below. And secondly, before you start coming up with the bug out bag or the items to put in your bug out bag, you need to ask yourself a very important question. Are you bugging out alone or are you bugging out with a group? That's an important question to have the answer to because it's going to dictate what you bring in your bag and how big of a bag that you need. If you are traveling in a group, it's a good idea to know what everybody else is bringing. That way you don't bring unnecessary duplicates of something when you could have brought another piece of gear that would have benefited your group. So enough of my rambling, let's get into the bag. Okay, so the bag itself is the Rush 72 2.0 backpack from 511 Tactical and it is uh, 55 liters. The bag itself weighs right under 40 pounds and some people may think that's a lot, but to me, it's fine. I can, I train a lot, so it's not really that big of a deal. I can carry this comfortably for many miles. Okay, to start out, you know, I do have these carabiners on here. I always carry plenty of carabiners on all of my bags, just because it's easier if the ground's wet than to uh, hang these on a branch or something like that, on a railing, on a fence, that way the whole bag doesn't get dirty and wet. Okay, the way I'm gonna do this is just like all the other bag videos I've done. I'm gonna do the entire outside, then I'm gonna open it up. We're gonna go in the inside. I like to keep things pretty simple and pretty organized. So this side is all about food collection. Yes, you can bring food with you, but at some point that food is gonna run out pretty quick, especially if you're hiking 10 miles a day through rough terrain or through a city town, just you're gonna be burning a lot of energy. So you're gonna need to replace that energy with something. And that's the food that you bring. But if you don't bring tools with you that you can actually collect food with, you're gonna be stranded pretty easily. You're gonna be hungry and tired and you're gonna be pretty vulnerable to attacks. So the first thing that I brought, it's not really food collection, it's more of just a bush wrapping item. It's just a hand drill. If you spent any time out in the woods camping alone, you know how beneficial this is. Secondly, in here, I have my saw. So it's a collapsible saw, I believe from Gerber. And I have used this thing quite a lot. Let me show you real quick. So if you have any wood that you need to process, break down to build a firewall or to build a shelter to get firewood, cut it up to the right size, you're going to need a saw with you. And I like this one because it claps it down so easy. doesn't take up a lot of room in your pack, so I just shove it in there. Forget about it. The next thing in the pack is going to be my telescopic fishing pole. So when you're bugging out, you're going to be... Typically around water, unless you're in like the middle of the desert in Utah, unless you're in somewhere remote where there's not a lot of water, but most of the time you're going to be around water and hopefully you can catch a fish. That way you don't have to just rely on what's in your pack. Obviously the reel for the fishing pole. And then I brought these small things of snare wire. So if you're out camping and maybe you got a shelter set up somewhere or whatever, maybe you're just in a building somewhere in the city, doesn't really matter where you're at. If you have snare wire set up and you're able to catch an animal while you're sleeping, it's just going to be passive food. That way you don't have to dip into your pack. It's a good practice to set up as many as you possibly can. The snare wires are working for you to collecting food. That way you don't have to put as much energy into going out and hunting. And it's not very complicated to do. I mean, if as long as you get them in the right spot, I mean, the actual setup itself, it's not too bad. Okay, the last thing I have in here is going to be 50 pound test line for your fishing pole. What that is mainly going to be used for is uh, bank lines, you know, same concept as the snare wire. You set out 15, 20 bank lines on a river, on a lake somewhere, 
when you're sleeping, you wake up and you check them in the morning. That way you don't have to put hours and hours and hours of your daylight time trying to catch a fish. You can let that work for you while you're sleeping. Over. I'm gonna move on to my ax. It's just an old cheapie. You can find these at Walmart. You don't really need a very expensive ax. I mean, if you want one, then whatever, you can go that option. And this itself, I really couldn't find a good design of how to hold the ax on there with just some overly expensive sheath. So I actually came up with this and made this myself. So I don't know, I might make more of them. Who knows, that can be an option. I don't know where this is gonna lead me to. Okay, so this side was my food collection. This is gonna be my water collection, my water purification pouch. So right off the bat, that fell out. This is a Silcock key. This is a really cheap uh, tool and it's very important if you're inside the city. So a lot of the cities have big buildings and on those big buildings are faucets on the lower levels. And a lot of those faucets, you need a special key to access the water because they try to keep homeless people out from just turning the faucets on, taking a shower, leaving the water on, running up their water bill. So an easy way to mitigate that is just by having a special key. And a lot of those use this. So find out which one it is, you open it, and you got yourself some water. Next thing is gonna be my boiling pot and my uh, grill geo press. So this boiling pot, it's pretty simple. All you do, fill up water and you boil it. You do not want a double walled, like vacuum sealed cup to do that because it will explode on you. So get a single walled, just cheap cup, boil water and you're good to go. Okay, so the grill geo press. I have done a video of this in the past. If you wanna go see it, go check out this video. So inside the grill, I have a few things. Number one is gonna be the Sawyer Mini. These are a very good, uh, cheaper alternative than the Grill Geo Press because these are pretty expensive if you're just getting into this stuff and you don't have a big budget. I would rather go with the Sawyer or the Geo Press because this is a little bit more expensive. The Sawyers kind of do the same thing. They're not as user friendly. You gotta ha either have the Sawyer pouches or a smart water bottle that will adapt to screw onto that. It's just real easy. So you got a water bottle or a pouch full of water, screw this on, pop that, you drink out of it, and you're good. Last thing I have in here, water tablets. So water tablets are gonna be good, good thing to have no matter what because they don't take up a lot of room and they can purify water if you don't know if it's safe to drink or not. Okay, so I got absolutely flamed in my comments whenever I, was, whenever I made the GeoPress video because they kept saying I didn't take the cap off and I was trying to explain to them it's, you know, it's kind of hard to do. Like, cause it was the very first time I ever used the GeoPress. I was going out and testing it, but I got flamed in the comments because they said I didn't take a cap off, which I did. I'll still show you how it's hard to do. So the way this works, take this apart, put water in there up to like the 20 milliliter line. Is that 20 milliliters? I don't know. Up to this line right there. And you put this in there and you press down and it gets filtered through here, goes up in here, and you can drink out of it. But as I was doing it in the video, look, it's off. I just had it tucked on. I was pressing it, and it's still kind of difficult to do. But yeah, I just want to show you that if you have a hard time doing it yourself, then don't think you're doing something wrong because they're made to be vacuum sealed. It's a good job. But anyways, yes, use the grill for bugging out if you want to purify water. All right, I got all that cleaned out of the way, so let's go ahead and go to the top. So in here, okay. <laughs> No, oh, that falls out, kind of looks a little goofy, but I promise it's not. Spoon and fork. I mean, yeah, I get, you can use the ones that, you know, it's a spoon and fork in one, but this doesn't take up a lot of room and it's not that heavy, so you're gonna need that. Spoon and fork, obviously a spoon. It's kind of hard to make that out in the woods. I mean, yeah, you can take a stick, but I've tried that also in a camping video. It doesn't work as easy as you think, so just bring a spoon and fork with you. It's just gonna be one of them little extra luxuries that you're glad that you had. Okay, a light. I do need to get one that has the red in it because red at night doesn't travel as far, but you can still see what you need to see. But yeah, always have a light with you. That way you can see in the dark. So this is a fireman key. And okay, I got to set the stage. So there's going to be lawlessness everywhere, right? And there's not going to be a government to protect you. There's not going to be a police station to protect you. It's going to be every man for themselves. So 
when you put in that type of situation, your moral compass of what you're willing to do to survive is gonna shift a little bit. The situation that you're gonna be put in in a shit hit the fan situation are going to be very difficult and you're gonna have to make decisions that you never would have thought you would have had to make. One of them decisions, you know, if it's raining down real hard and you're running somewhere and you gotta get inside of a locked building, a fireman key is gonna be necessary. All this does, it just slips between the door jam and it pops that first lock out. That way, if it's just a knob lock, pop that through and you get it that way. Now, if it's one of those like fence locks with the little latch over the top, you can slip this through and then pop it, and then you're in. Don't do this outside of a shit hit the fan situation or unless you're at your own house and you wanna practice, but to do to somebody else's house, whenever the shit's not hitting the fan, I don't recommend that uh, because you're gonna get in trouble. Now this is a wire cutters. It's just a, really it's just wire rope and it's used to cut multiple things. Plastic, metal, wood, you name it. It's gonna cut it. Let me show you real quick. Why would something like this be useful to put in your bug out bag? Well, number one, it weighs next to nothing and it doesn't take up any room. And anything with a padlock, if you don't have a key to that padlock, here's your key. Kinda looks like this fingers in here there's a metal piece right there wrap around whatever you want to cut slide it back and forth it's gonna cut it now I don't use this for criminal reasons but in this shit hits van situation uh, say that there's a deadbolt it's deadbolted and you can get something in between the crack of the door <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you guys this you cut a notch through here take this off you can slide this piece through the crack reattach it slide this back and forth and you can cut that deadbolt do whatever you want with that information uh don't do nothing illegal just it could save your life and a shit hit the fan situation so that's why i bring it also if you're gonna process wood you don't want to use an axe or your saw you can do that too if you're gonna go the walking dead style where they had to cut off herschel's legs because they got bit by a zombie you can use this to cut somebody's leg off okay so in my get home bag video i showed you guys my bag of tools that I carry with me and inside of there was a can opener and you guys kept saying to get the P38s because they're a lot better and they don't take up a lot of room so I did this is all this can opener is why would you need a can opener well to open cans yeah those are gonna be the shelf stable foods because in a shit fan situation there's not gonna be any delivery trucks all the distribution supply lines are gonna be down so the only thing that's gonna be edible is shelf storage food a lot of the time is like pastas uh box food and canned food you don't have a good way to open a can you can ruin a lot of the product inside if you're smashing on the ground with a rock and those are just extra calories that you don't need to lose so if you have a can opener with you or a sharp knife you're good to go now obviously like i said before this doesn't take up a lot of room so i carry this in my bug out bag put this bag up oh there's one more thing in here I should put this in my electronics bag. I'm going to show you that at the end. I've actually got to show you two different things at the end that I'm going to be carrying with me as I'm bugging out that really don't fit in the bag. I mean, one of them will, but there's another way that I'll carry it. I'm going to show you, like I said, at the end of this video. Um, so this is just a really simple, just battery charger. Your phone's still going to have some use. I mean, you can write a bunch of notes now, like antibiotics, the names of antibiotics. The prescriptions of antibiotics, the dosages of antibiotics, or different mapping systems, different pictures of stuff around your town that you can still access with your phone, and it should hit the fan situation unless it got destroyed by an EMP or something like that. But your phone's still gonna have a lot of usages come the apocalypse. So that's just a way to charge your phone. All right, so in this pouch right here, I have magazines for right for that I will be bringing now the reason I have them stored in there is because if I need to get to something very very fast it's most likely gonna be a magazine because in a gunfight you need access to your ammunition very fast um, there may be some people that watch this video right now that don't like guns um, if you're one of them people all I have to say to you is you're setting yourself up for failure. If you have to fight somebody, you know, that has a gun and you don't have a gun, you're gonna lose that battle 100% of the time. Come the apocalypse, come grid down. If you're into this lifestyle at all, 
like I said, no police are going to be able to have your back. The government is not going to be there. It's going to be every man for themselves. And you're going to be put in situations where you may have to defend yourself. And the best way to defend yourself is with a firearm. It's a really good tool if you want to hunt with. Yeah, you can go around and tape a knife on a stick and a spear deer, but good luck with that. If you just have a rifle, it's pretty simple. It's going to conserve a lot of energy. Take another animal from two, three, four hundred yards away. You don't have to get up as close. So you're going to want some type of firearm. I don't care the caliber because having any caliber is better than having none. So whatever you got right now, whatever you're comfortable with, just bring that. Just bring a lot of ammo with that. Bring that rifle. Bring the handgun. Whatever you have, just bring it with you. All right. I'm going to move on to the front of the pack here. Okay, so... This is just an extra pouch. So I got bug spray because I absolutely hate bugs. I hate mosquitoes, I hate ticks, I hate all of them. And I don't want them on me, so I'm bringing bug spray because I can. Uh, paracord, at least 100 feet of paracord. I always say that because if you ever do some solo camping then you know just how important uh, having a lot of paracord is. I like at least 100 feet because if you're building a tarp shelter and you got a 50 foot distance between two trees and that's the only ridge line you can find, you're gonna use 50 feet of your paracord right there. I would much rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So just bring a bunch of paracord with you. Binoculars. These aren't very expensive binoculars. Just get you a cheap pair of binoculars. It's good, you know, say that you got a situation where you don't know what's exactly over the top of this mountain ridge or you're on top of a building and you want to scout farther into a field because you can see some movement you don't know if it's an animal or a human you can use binoculars to figure that out if it's animals you're going to approach them a lot different than you would a human so just have some binoculars with you because it's going to give you the advantage over somebody that doesn't have it uh, compass for navigation i probably should upgrade this compass because this is a pretty cheap one i think it's only like ten dollars or something like that but having a nice reliable compass is going to save your life obviously you can direct you where you're going say you got something plotted on the map you know if you got to know northwest or just saying northwest follow it as best you can you're good to go okay so this is actually a pitch counter for baseball but it can also be used in a shit hit the fan situation say that uh you're on a scouting mission you know there's a lot of things you can you're gonna need to keep track of, you know, how many people, how many buildings. The quick way to do that is every person that you see, click the button, click the button, click the button. You don't have to think about it because the numbers just right here. It's really good information to have, you know, knowing how many people are in a group. And that way you wanna get that number correctly because if you're in a group, it's gonna help you make decisions on how you're gonna approach them. Are you gonna approach them friendly? Are you gonna set up a, you know, an ambush to control the situation? That way nothing escalates. Um, just anything, I mean, how many, crop tomatoes that they got just use this to count it the more information they have the better okay so next i have uh just a standard notebook i mean just write in it write notes to people keep notes of things scouting mission once again say you want to leave a spot somewhere say it got hot write somebody a note lay it on the ground they come to that spot and they know you left so they know where to go so this is just a standard one and then this is a write in the rain notebook I mean, this allows you to write whenever it's raining down. You know, it's so important to keep notes and pass information on to people whenever you can't talk to them by having notes. One way to do that is by having the ability to write in the rain. And this notebook allows you to do that. And then I just have some pens and a uh, Sharpie and some pencils. Okay, so that's the administration pouch. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is actually pretty unique, I think, but there's a reason that I have it in here. One of the things that you're going to notice whenever you're in a bug out situation, probably the first thing actually is there's not going to be any electricity. Um, it could be for an EMP reasons, the EMP knocked the entire power grid out, or it wasn't even an EMP and the fact that it's just a societal collapse. Think about it. If society is collapsing, there's turmoil everywhere, no government, no police, nothing. The people at the power plant itself, like right now, something happens tomorrow, they're not going to man the power supply. They're going to go home and protect their families. If no one is there at the power companies and the power plants to man the operation, there's not going to be any power. Within a few days, you're going to have mass you know, power outages everywhere, transformers collapsing one after another. There's not going to be anybody available to fix those problems. So one of the first things that's going to happen is all the power is going to go out. So. A way around that, what you can do is, I'll show you real quick. You can bring power with you. 
What I mean by that, I actually got to dig into my other bag I was going to show you at the end. I want to give you a little sneak peek of that. But anyways, this is a solar panel. So you're going to have electricity on the go. And it's actually pretty easy how it works. As long as you have the right tool necessary. I'm going to show you. So a lot of people will just carry those little power banks, the one I showed you earlier, but those are very limited. So what this is, it's a power bank that's made by the exact same company that makes these. So they're interchangeable and they work flawlessly together. And this one's a little bit bigger than the little one I showed you in the beginning because you got your USB ports and then your two plug-in and your three plug-in for equipment that requires a little bit more power. So inside of the solar panels, on the back side anyways, you got these cables that plug into the back of the solar panel and then into this, and this is how this gets charged. And then from here, you can charge whatever you need to charge. So I thought that was a really unique idea and a great idea to have power on the go. And I haven't seen a lot of people put that set up in their own bag. So I thought I'd give you guys that idea and that uh, takeaway because absolutely critical to have power when you need it. I'm going to show you more of what's inside of here at the end of the video. On the back side, I'm going to flip this around. Uh, as you can tell, there's a straw that comes out to my right hand side on my right shoulder. That way I can drink water. Inside of here, I'm not going to pull it out because it's kind of a pain in the butt to get back in. I have a camelback system. These five lug bags are really good at adapting their setup to the camelback system because you have your pack in here and then you got a hole to put the tube through. It leads right to the shoulder strap, run it down, you're good. So I always have a camelback system. Yeah, you can bring bottles of water with you, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it in your bag every single time you want to drink. Why would you not just have it right at your shoulder? Then you can drink it on the go. All right. I'm going to open this up and we're going to get to the big stuff. All right. I'm going to start from this side and work all the way through the bag. So, on the top right here, you have gloves. You need to keep your hands safe because a splinter, something that small, you know, cut, something like a blood blister that I got the other day, it's kind of annoying, but anyway, something like that can be life threatening because. It's not going to be any doctors or take care of your boo-boos that can, you know, something small can turn infected and then you end up losing your life over a splinter in your finger. Okay, and then this goes along with a telescopic fishing pole. Just a simple tackle. I mean, yeah, you can make your own tackle on the go. You know, cut off a piece of cloth, whatever, tie to it. Uh, tied to a hook, but you gotta have a hook with you in order to tie a piece of cloth to the hook. So hooks, weights, you know, lure, stuff like that. It's a good thing to bring with you, especially if you have a fishing pole with you. And then also inside of here, I have a buck knife. Obviously knives are gonna be used for mul multiple different things, cutting all types of stuff. Yeah, you can always have a pocket knife on you, but it's good to have a fixed blade too, because if you don't want to carry a gun, whatever, that's fine. If you have a knife with you, say you're somewhere where firearm laws are really strict, say you're a felon and right now in the United States, you can't own a gun. So a knife is going to be your second best bet, maybe behind a crossbow, but or a bow and arrow, that may be second to a firearm, but have a knife with you. The reason I chose this knife itself is because this knife is really good at skinning deer. I know it's a little thick for a flay knife, but it does the job very well. I'm going to move on to the bottom pouch right here. Okay. Heirloom seeds. So why the heck would I bring seeds with me when I'm bugging out? If you're starting over and you actually get to your bug out location, eventually you're going to want to set like a permanent shelter and living situation. Like I said, a lot of the distribution items, the produce is going to be gone. It's not going to be any more produce in the store. It's all going to be rotten. And if you don't have seeds in order to rebuild, to build a garden, and you're going to be screwed. I mean, you have to think long term here. If you're bugging out and you get to your actual location, but you don't have the necessary things to run that location and set it up the way that you want, set it up successfully, then what's the point of even getting there in the first place? Heirloom seeds. You have to have heirloom seeds because heirloom seeds, say you plant a tomato, tomato sprouts, and you get the seeds out of the tomato. Heirloom seeds, you're able to plant those seeds for the next year, and they'll just keep re reproducing. A lot of the produce that you get in the store, say you buy a tomato from the store, 
Number one, they might not they might not even have any seeds because they've been genetically modified to not have them, or the seeds themselves aren't gonna be able to reproduce for the next year because the grocery stores want you dependent on them. They don't want you self-sufficient. Next in here, I just have some rubber gloves. I mean, you're skinning a deer, so you come across somebody that you wanna help, they're all bloody. You don't wanna touch that stuff, so put some rubber gloves on. Lastly in here, something that may give some of you guys PTSD, the old COVID mask. It's not for COVID, but there may be some stuff stirred in the air, some viruses, because hygiene is going to be nasty. No running water. A lot of people are going to be unprepared. A lot of people are going to be desperate, bleeding, viruses, bacteria everywhere. It's a good idea to not breathe all that stuff in because it may jack your lungs up, it may get you sick yourself. So just throw a mask on while you're around a lot of people. Um, might be a good idea. Okay, moving on to the actual main compartment of the bag, I have my shelter system and that is a tarp and a hammock. And the reason that I went with the tarp and a hammock system over something like a tent is due to the fact that a tarp and a hammock is a lot lighter than your basic tent setup. And also, I can put up a tarp and a hammock a lot faster than I can just setting up a tent. Another reason that I went with this setup over a tent is because the tent takes up a lot more room than this setup that I have now. So that's why I went with that. Um, I'm gonna move on now to Jace Medical. I done a whole video going over this bag and what's inside of it in a separate video. If you wanna go check that video out, the link's gonna be up here. Um, but yeah, the Jace Medical Bags, they offer antibiotics where you don't have to go through the pharmaceutical paywall. You don't have to go get a prescription for them. Well, you do actually. It's a lot easier than just going to your doctor. Basically, you sign up online, you put in your information, and they'll send you antibiotics that they think you're gonna use. A huge reason that I have this in my bag is there's not gonna be any doctors available, you know, after the society collapses. You're still gonna need antibiotics, no matter if the doctors are there or not, because infections and stuff are gonna come up, and you're gonna have to be able to deal with that. Another big reason to have antibiotics with you is that it's gonna be an extremely valuable bargaining tool. Currency is not gonna mean anything. Gold's really not gonna mean anything because you can't eat gold. Antibiotics, that can be used as a form of currency to trade goods and whatever you need because someone else is gonna have infections pop up in their group and they're still gonna need to take care of that. And if you have antibiotics, you can trade that for stuff that you need. I'm gonna move on to my fire starting kit. I have also done a video on this. If you wanna go see it, go check this video out. But I'll show you some of the stuff in here that I always carry with me. So I have some uh, Vaseline and cotton balls. I have a knife and a ferro rod. I have some fat wood. I got this EOTech, which I really, really like. So yeah, if you wanna go check that video out, I'm gonna have it up above. It is a good idea to have multiple ways to start a fire with you because in different conditions, not all the same tools are gonna work. Like in really, really windy conditions, your lighter is not gonna work. And also in like really wet conditions, you know, your normal tender is not gonna light because it's wet, but you still need to start a fire to stay warm, to cook your meals, whatever. So it's a really good idea to have multiple ways to start a fire with you. All of this right here, honestly the remainder of the bag, this is all food. And there's a very specific reason why I brought this food and I'll go over it with you over something else you can buy like the uh the mountain houses at walmart and you guys know all the different brands but the reason that i chose so i have three mres here which honestly i should have five with me five total because five mres plus all of this stuff is about twenty thousand calories so while you're bugging out you're going to be burning a lot of calories probably more than what you are in your normal day to day because you're not continuously hiking throughout your day unless you're an extreme athlete or something like that you're at least going to have to take in as many calories that you're burning or really close to it because if not, you're gonna start to get tired, start to get fatigued, you're not gonna be able to sleep good, you're not gonna be able to have enough motivation to keep going. If you don't have enough calories in your body, you're not gonna be able to defend yourself properly. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of this food. So I broke down three MREs, which I said it should be five. And um, the reason that I did that is because whenever you get a typical MRE, it's a lot bigger than this. And when you break it down like I have, I'm gonna do a whole video how I did this. Whenever you do it like this, you save a lot of room in your pack and you also save a lot of weight. And that's very important considering what's going in your bag. So each one of these MREs have about 1,300 calories. Okay, so this is a 32 ounce bottle. It's like a Nalgene bottle, just whatever type of bottle. And it's full of mixed nuts. And the reason that I chose mixed nuts is because if you do any research on low weight food with really high calorie count, mixed nuts are gonna be right at the top. So in this bottle itself, I have close to 5,000 calories of just in these mixed nuts. If you were to try to take 5,000 calories of the Mountain House or canned foods, you would have a block of just food like this. 
compared to that. And that's a really big deal whenever you're trying to save space in your pack. Okay, now this is high calorie protein. The reason that I chose this protein is the same reason I chose the mix nuts. It's a very low weight with a really high calorie count. And this itself has about 3,500 calories. So this is about, you know, a day and a half just worth of food right here. And everything combined, it can get me by for about, I would like to say 10, 15 days, but more than likely not, I'm gonna be burning close to three to 4,000 calories if you're really moving. So I'm gonna be tired, but I'm not gonna be starving. Finally, for food, I have my pick me up bag. So if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you guys know this is a staple in all of my bags. If you're a pick me up bag or a pick me up pouch, I always have a pick me up something. Okay, so inside of here, show you, okay. So first off, I have honey. So in the past, I've promoted the Cliff Gel Shots uh, quite frequently, actually. I don't have anything against them. This is just a cheaper alternative. Honey gives you really quick energy fast because it has natural sugars in it and your body processes it very fast. So you're gonna have that quick hit of energy and there's I think like 16 grams of carbohydrates per teaspoon or something like that. And that's gonna allow you to sustain that energy for longer over the gel shots and they're just, like I said, a cheaper alternative to them. So then right here I have the drip drops. They're just electrolyte packets that you put in your water bottles. Yeah, if you're gonna be walking a long distance each day, you're gonna need to have electrolytes put in your body unless you're gonna be cramping, which I learned that in my 30 mile get home bag test. It's up here. Yeah, so I think mile 15, mile 16, my knees were just cramping up really bad. I had to stretch out a little bit. And the guy in the comments, which I didn't even think about it, I was just drinking pure water over and over because it was a hot day and I didn't have any electrolytes put in my water. So yeah, I always have electrolytes with you to supplement in your water. And then I have dried banana chips here. If you don't like banana chips, you can do apples. They are closely related with the weight to the calorie distribution, but the same reason that I put the nuts in here as I did with the banana chips is because they're really low weight, really high calorie count. And your calorie count is gonna be very important whenever you're doing long distance walking. So we got five cliff bars here. I like the cliff bars. I mean, there's so many different like alternatives to the cliff bars for energy bars, whatever they wanna market it as. But I just like the taste of them, so I put them in here. And that's it for my pick me up bag. And then this monstrosity of a map. Pretty much any truck stop has this style of road map for the truckers. My last one that I had, I think it's the 2021. It's a lot smaller than this. I wish I would have found a smaller one because it doesn't take up too much room in the pack because it sets in there actually quite perfectly. Maybe the bigger one's gonna have an advantage while I'm bugging out, you can see stuff better. You need a map with you because all the navigation is gonna be down, you know, the cell phone tower is gonna be down, satellites might be down too, and the internet's most definitely gonna be down if there's no connection. There's some pros and cons of this map. It's gonna be all the interstate highways, so when you're traveling from you know, city to city, that's gonna be beneficial. But if you're in a more rural area, these don't have like lettered highways, like A highway, B highway, C highway, whatever. County road 221, county road 457. So I'm gonna have those in here because it's just all interstate highway. What I recommend and what I tell people to do is inside of the big maps, put a bunch of your county maps in there like i have a county map for all like the eight or nine counties around me let's say that i'm on an interstate somewhere and i have to go in between the little towns and the back roads most likely the roads that i'm going to need to find to navigate on are going to be found in the county map and i also put city maps in there so with your city maps your, your county maps and then the big interstate highway maps you should have all your bases covered whenever you're trying to navigate on the roads okay so that's it for the pack now I was gonna show you the two additional uh, bags that I'm gonna be bringing with me. And one of them is gonna be my medical kit, which I keep in my truck all the time. I've done a video of that in the past, so if you're gonna go check that video out, then just go to my channel and then click videos and then it should be in there. First, I'm gonna go over my electronics bag. So this is the Wise Owl Outfitters. This is a waterproof bag. You put all your electronics in, fold it up. and then it's gonna be waterproof. Now for actually what's inside of here, I have the chargers for my Cobra walkie-talkies that I'm bringing with me. I have one Cobra, and then the second Cobra walkie-talkie. Communication is gonna be absolutely crucial whenever you're traveling in a group, because without communication, a lot of people can get stranded, a lot of people can die. You can avoid confrontations. If well, somebody way up in front of your group scouting out 
and they see people up ahead, they can relay it back to you to keep you guys a distance. That way you don't all go at once, you get ambushed or something like that. But communication is absolutely key whenever you're traveling. And then this is the base charger for my Beofang. The reason I have a Beofang and a two-way radio is two-way radio is gonna be for like intergroup communications. And the Beofang with the standard antenna and <laughs> the ridiculously big four foot antenna this dang thing um is going to be used for scanning purposes so a lot of communication is going to be happening on ham radio frequencies and you can scan with the bell fang to listen on those channels it's absolutely critical to have a bag that's waterproof because electronics don't like water and if you want them to work you got to keep them out of the water okay and lastly my med kit so how i typically have this it's in my truck and this just goes around my headrest and just sets in the back seat like that um, and the reason that I went with this specific pouch is because it also has Molly connections that I can put on the front of my bag when I need it to. I don't just want to put this in this bag and just let it set in a corner somewhere until I need it because there's life saving stuff in here and I'd rather have it with me in my truck and then put it on my bag when I need to bug out. Hope you guys like this video. Um, tell me what you think about this bag in the comments. Um, tell me what, you know, I could have done better what you guys do in your packs that I didn't have. And if you guys got any ideas from me showing you what I have, then let me know down in the comments again. I appreciate all you guys watching. And if you made it this far in the video, you might as well hit the subscribe button because I entertained you for this long. Um, with that being said, until next time.